Hello and welcome to this workshop called Life and Style from the Inside Out. My name is Katrina Horn and I'm a whole of life coach. I help my clients be all of who they can be from the inside out. And let me introduce, oh, let Lucy introduce herself, Lucy Barrett, who's a style coach. Hi everyone, I'm Lucy and I'm a style coach. I collaborate with my clients so that they have inner confidence and full self-expression using the transformation transformative power of clothing so that your wardrobe is supportive, successful and creative and um, contains only things that flatter you, align with your life and express who you are. And our intention with this workshop is that one, you have an appreciation of who you are and your inner radiance. Two, an appreciation of who you are and what you already have, your life, your body, and your wardrobe. And third, inspiration of how to express who you are with inner confidence and <clears throat> flair. So Lucy, if you could get us started by talking a little bit about all the phases we go through in life. Yeah, so in our lives, we go through many phases, whether that's personally, professionally, we might live in different places, we might have different work or family um, commitments, we might have body changes, well, we will have body changes as we go through, you know, puberty, all through to menopause, and all those different things that um, has our body change. And we, we as people evolve through time. But there's one assured relationship that we will always have, and that is our relationship to our body. So we can't separate us from our body. It's our home for the rest of our lives. So we've been talking, Katrina and I, how important it is how we think about it, how we look after it, and how we dress it and adorn it. And that's really something that we're talking about today, which is why it's from the inside out, because this body is our home. And that's Brilliant. It. <laughs> yeah, and I've got a question for you, Lucy. If you want to tell me, we just dive straight into everything we've got to share. And about <clears throat> this personal style, could you tell us about what it is and particularly how we find it, please? Yeah, so the word personal style, the word person is in that expression. And really, your personal style is you expressed on the outside. It's the intersection of who you are and what you wear. And I think it's something that it can be quite hard to define, but we might recognize it in other people and we might um, we know it when we see it, when we feel it and when we have it. But it might be quite something that's quite difficult to define. And it's really a lifetime in progress. It will it will evolve and change as we evolve and change as well. So, yeah. So right. if we and. Um Go ahead, Lucy. I was just saying, if we talk a little bit about <clears throat> how we find it, because it because it can be quite an elusive thing. And I think one way that we can find it is really start to get curious and look at what are our own preferences? What do we like? What do we find inspiring? What are we attracted to? But it goes much wider than clothing. So clothing can be one inspiration, but it goes much wider than that. So it can be you know, in your own wardrobe, or it can be <clears throat> in the wardrobe of your friends or your family or people in the public eye that you might admire either now or from his from, you know, history. And it can go even wider than that, like art, nature, um, interiors, architecture, all of these things that we like and enjoy, even, you know, when you're in a shop buying a birthday card, what kind of cards are you attracted to? Or it's all around us and all of these things start to inform what our personal style is and what our preferences are. And then we can start to look for the themes that are running through these things. And once we've got a real sense of those, we can start to look at how we might interpret those in our clothing and in the way that we're dressing our body. Right. And um, I know that I get a lot of my inspiration from nature. Like I love to be outside. And I love my garden, I love my flowers. And so I feel that I feel really good when I'm wearing sort of light colors and, and light fabrics and, and that they all be natural. And that is really important to me. But maybe the audience, if you're here live, you could share with us in the chat where it is you get your inspiration from. 
Like Lucy mentioned a lot of things. Um, have you got any favorites? So let us all get inspired. I think we also get a lot of inspiration from magazines and watching celebrities and, and social media for, for what that's worth, really. But let's yeah, not go into the I have a client I worked with recently, Katrina, who she's she's let her hair go grey. So she's embraced the grey and she's been colouring her hair and she's let it go. And and so that, you know, looked like a review of her colour palette. And when we reviewed the colour palette, she said, oh, these remind me of Monet and the colours that Monet used in his painting. So she's going to use Monet and his paintings as one as an inspiration of how she might start to try incorporating these colours that are new to her into a wardrobe. So I think that's, you know, that kind of thing is just really inspiring when you can connect what you like with something it doesn't have to be a painter but yeah I think it's it's quite interesting yeah and of course the colors are important but I think it's also the for me the the fabric is really crucial and I only became aware of that lately so mm -hmm. I don't know maybe you need to train as a stylist or be an interior design to know about fabrics I didn't know the first thing about fabrics and I didn't know how important it really was both to how how it looks on you but also to how it feels on the inside could you talk to us about that, Lucy, please? Yeah, I, th I think fabrics are a huge reason why we like or don't like something. And that could be the actual composition of the fabric. So, for instance, you know, if you live in a hot country, maybe some of the synthetic fabrics don't work in the heat um, as much as the natural fabrics. But it, the, the fabric is how it feels. And I think that's the thing. We think of appearance as a visual thing, but sometimes it's how something makes you feel. Like, you know, some people don't like to wear things like, 100% wool because it can be a little bit itchy um you know that kind of so it can be how it feels it how it hangs whether it creases or not all of these things are the fabric you know is it stiff does it have movement so it's really like the all these different technical things about a piece of clothing that might be why you like or not like it not just the visual not just how it's looking but definitely that feeling and, you know, if you don't like ironing, mm. you look for fabrics that don't need ironing. And that starts to bring in lifestyle as well. <laughs> yeah. you know, if you don't like doing that, yeah, then, you know, you don't have to, you know, so how lifestyle has to be intertwined as well. Right. And Beth, Beth Allison is saying colour is big for me and she likes soft and comfortable. And I'm very much into soft and often comfortable. But then I think it's about dressing for what it is we're doing. So, um, but maybe we'll touch on that in our next point. Definitely. So it was really interesting what you said, your client who switched from, or she went to what she described as Monet colors, like Monet, the painter. Mm. Um, so would you say that there are any colors that go particularly well with our age or should we change our color schemes as we grow older or has it got nothing to do with it, Lucy? Well, I think I think we do evolve and, it and you know, on the colour side, we're really looking at the hair colour, the eye colour and the skin colour and how they're harmonising together and looking to harmonise the colours with those. And I think, you know, that does change over time. And it's, it's very personal choice. You know, some people colour their hair forever. Some people don't. Um, some people never do like me. Um, and I think and it, do, it does affect how we look but and it's not just our hair that changes our skin softens our eye colors soften so there can be quite a softening down as as we age but it's it's going to be different for everyone and that's why it's important to you know review and adjust as we go along in the colors we're wearing the styles the fits all of that kind of thing so we're definitely choosing and we're not keep you know getting stuck in things that used to work rather than the things that are working now so this reviewing and adjusting but reviewing and adjusting with the knowledge of what works for you I think is is the most important thing but you know but our mm. coloring does change as we as we age definitely mm. that is so interesting so for instance I noticed that instead of wearing black uh aging like I'm 57 like you are Lucy and I can say that because we are sort of twins because we discovered we've got the same birthday. And not only have we got the same birthday, 
we've got the same age. Oh, oh, so we cool. are the same age. I'm thinking of it in French. We are the same age. So, but that was just a side note. I noticed that I don't so much enjoy wearing black, and I I prefer dark blue actually. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know we do soften as we get older, and and I think it's listening, isn't it? Listening to yourself, which is one of the reasons we you know we're doing this, so that people are listening to themselves and really getting to know themselves and their preferences and not getting stuck in what they've always done or what they've always been told to do or what they thought they should do, that kind of thing, and really starting to bring out who they really are and their own preferences. I think it, it's really important. Yeah, let's not get stuck in habits or any sort of labels. I think also when you lose weight, for instance, or when you put on weight, when you change your body shape, which uh, if you're not already there, I can only say will happen with age. So we have to adapt, as you said, right? We always have to review and revise and um, find out who it is we are now. Yeah. And I think so you just of... told us how. Sorry, go ahead, Lucy. I was just going to say there's a level of acceptance there in, in what you're saying, Katrina, isn't there? Like accepting the changes, whatever whatever they may be, as as who we are now, rather than trying to, you know, carry on being that or you know yeah because your body will change and but we don't necessarily know how it's going to change or to what degree it's going to change until we're in it and it's happening no one can predict it really exactly exactly so you've just been describing to us how we bring out our authentic self in style and I was going to talk a little bit about how we can be authentic really in who we are and let that shine through because uh, we do talk about that in a ra uh, radiance because I think that beauty and style, although, I mean, of course, clothes are part of it, but it's also about who we are. So it's not just how we look, it's who we are. And I like to talk about um, who you are at your best. I like to be at my best. And when I talk about being at my best, it's not in the sense of being somebody perfect or being always performing. Um, it's about how I feel, what feels good. And I think that authenticity, you will know when you've hit it because it feels good, both in style and in lifestyle, in how you live. So finding out what styles we are is really just another way of expressing who you are. You can do that obviously in what you say and what you do, uh, what your work is and how you relate to people in your relationships and all of that. And how people perceive you is part of that. But then I think we can't really control how people perceive us. Uh, they will just go ahead and think of us whatever they want to think of us. Right? We can't control that. And we really don't need to because the most important part of this is us. So I think as long as it feels good to us, then it's authentic. And it's about then allowing ourselves to feel that and to be in touch with that most of the time. And I know that some people... Uh, like I, I first of all, I was a big time people pleaser, and that is really what I work with lots of clients on too. It's that we feel we have to live up to something. So, if you at least become aware that you've got a tendency to want to live up to something or be something you are not in order to please other people, well, that's a sure sign that you're being inauthentic and you can check in with yourself and see how it feels and it most probably won't feel good and I think that is ex an exact parallel to style because if you are um, if you're wearing something to please other people to live up to what is expected of you well then it might not feel that good in fact it could not feel good at all and I think perhaps Lucy that is something you come across with your clients too that they feel they have to dress for a particular situation. Is that something you recognize? 
Yeah, definitely. And, and I think sometimes it is lifestyle, isn't it? Even um, Isabella was saying earlier how, you know, if you're in a situation where you might have a uniform for a job or something like that, where it's dictated to you what you can and can't wear, I think that's that's something that we have to nav navigate. That can be a challenge. But um, yeah, there. but ev even in that situation, people find small little ways to express their <clears throat> express their personal style even if they're wearing the same thing as someone else, like where they've got their hair or the accessories or even down to like what shoes they wear, this personal style that we have innately in us will always come out and express itself in some way. I, I find, you know, that that's so interesting how, yeah, but I think, I think less and less, there's the, the less and less guidelines or rules, if you like, than maybe there were, there have been in the past. Um, but then sometimes that can be hard to navigate because you don't know what the guidelines are. And that can be just as difficult to navigate as having guidelines, if that makes sense. You know, when I started working in the late 80s, early 90s in a corporate environment, it was kind of a, you know, men wore a suit, shirt, tie. Women wore a jacket with a dress or a skirt and some brave women wore trousers. And, and that was kind of almost like a uniform. And now it's very different to, um, you know, what people wear to work, what the expectations are. So I, th I think sometimes it, it can be quite difficult. So then it's kind of really important to investigate who you are and what you want to wear and how you want to express yourself, given that there aren't the rigid guidelines that maybe there used, they used to be. So uh, I think, yeah, I think it's really important to do that. Mm -hmm. So good. I just mentioned people pleasing as something that can come in the way of you being you, like being your authentic self, being all of who you can be because you're trying to live up to expectations. And out from styling from the inside out, from being or embracing our authentic style, really. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. And I think it is um, pleasing yourself, isn't it? And, and maybe that might be, um, you know, different ways of expressing that it might be you know even though you've maybe got a uniform how do you it might even be in ways that you can't see you know it might be that let's say you love to wear color you might have something colored underneath what you have to wear so it still gives you that sense of expressing yourself even though it might not even be visual because as we say you know style is more than the visual I think we think of it as visual but it's far far more than that but yeah definitely and I think it depends what situation you're in doesn't it as well Mm, yeah so some of the things that come in the way of us feeling like allowing ourselves to express who it is we are in our style what would they be do you think you, well you there mentioned... might be things like your I'd, I'd call it your style story so maybe there are things as you um as you've gone through your life maybe things that people have said to you or you've read or you've someone said something and you've kind of started to restrict yourself because I don't know someone said you didn't look good in a color or someone criticized what you're wearing or something like that and you've internalized that or maybe you've decided certain things about your body that you know you kind of haven't made peace with so it can be your style story it can be that we get stuck in a particular style so I know some people struggle like a lot of the people I work with have transitioned from one thing to another so let's say you've had a corporate career and now you've got your own business and you don't have to wear that rigid uniform anymore but you don't really know what else to wear because you've been wearing it for so long it could be you say how you feel and think about yourself how you talk about yourself comparing to others I think is something that can also be quite a big thing for people, isn't it? We look at other people and make comparisons and that can get us stuck. Um, and looking like the labels, we can give ourselves labels, we can also give our clothes labels and that can restrict how we use things and how we, how we wear things. And I think sometimes we might dress for or shop for a fantasy life that we don't have or and maybe we'll never have or a life that we used to have rather than the life we have now. And really just, you know, when we don't really know ourselves, it's quite hard to start to express that because we don't really know what that is. So even that just not knowing our true self can can get in our way, really. So I think there's lots of things that can get in way of us truly. You know, if you look at children when they're, you know, I don't know, under five, they're just 
they're just expressed, aren't they? They just, you know, they wear what they like. They might wear spots and stripes and all these different combinations and they just feel good. They don't worry about whether anything goes. I'm not saying you should start wearing things that don't go, but do you know what I mean? That real, like that playful, um, mm -hmm. just enjoyment of it. I think we, it, we can tend to start to restrict ourselves quite a lot. Yeah, you know, I totally people. agree with that. And I can so resonate with Beth Allison just put in the chat. Uh, being short early in my career, I felt it was expected for me to wear heels, which never felt good. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm i very, very short too. And being born in Denmark, I felt totally out of place because I'm much smaller than anybody else. So now I live in France and I'm much more sort of standard. I'm sort of on the small side, but people are, are smaller than me, really. So it's just to... Um, to illustrate how this comparison really doesn't serve us um, at all, right? And I was wondering if anybody else wants to share in the chat what what really prevented them in the past or perhaps even now, uh, what prevents you from really expressing who you are, your authentic self? Is it comparison uh, that Lucy just mentioned? Is it attachment to a label? Is it that style story? What is it that could be sort of pulling at you, preventing you from just going all the way? So, um, like, I decided, I think it was three years ago, to cut my hair short. I used to have long hair, and it was so, sort of part of me, like long blonde hair. Uh, that went really well with playing the harp when I was a harpist. But aging, I just felt that this long hair was pulling me down and I frankly wasn't looking at my best with it. And so I thought, oh, yeah, last time I had my hair cut short, it looked dreadful for two years. <laughs> Waiting for it to grow out. So I didn't want to repeat that, but I thought, hmm. Maybe I should just try and see what my hair does with it now and what my hairdresser can do. So I went ahead and had my hair cut short and I never regretted it. It's both easier, much easier to care for. And second, it, I think it looks better. Maybe it's because I'm older. I don't know, but um, maybe it just suits me better. Have you got any comments on that, Lucy? Yeah, I, th I think it's easy to get kind of used to something, isn't it? Or used to seeing ourselves in a certain way. And, and there's one client that really sticks in my mind. And she came to one of my courses and she looked absolutely immaculate. She was wearing a tailored white shirt and black trousers and really nice jewellery. And I was like, <laughs> I wonder why she's here. But I think, you know, even when we we look good and we feel good, there's always a different level. And, and as she started to, to talk and as the course progressed, she started to share how she'd been dressing in this classic way for such a long time. But she, in on the inside, she felt like she was this colorful bohemian artist. And <clears throat> she just wasn't sure how to start expressing that and what other people might think, because like we get used to our style, mm -hmm. other people get used to seeing us in a certain way. And when we make changes, like, you know, with you cutting your hair, Katrina, it could be like, you know, one of the things that might stop us is how will other people react? You know, what what will what reaction will we get from other people? And, and so she particularly, you know, wanted to learn about colours and clothing styles so that she could start to express herself in a different way, different to what she'd been doing for many, many years. So I think sometimes it's easy to get used to the way we've always done things even though there might be a pull to do something else but we're not quite sure what to do or how to how to do that and I think mm. that's you know following that and it might be inspiration from others might we might look at other people and think well yeah I like what they're doing we might not copy them exactly and we wouldn't I wouldn't advise people to copy you exactly but see what the inspiration is and what is you know what is inspiring you what keeps having you look at that particular person type thing and I think that is uh you know, something that's really important to start listening to things that our mind is, is telling us. So, yes, you know, and um, what we feel different. drawn to in general, I find. What yeah. I feel drawn to, it must be something that pleases me. So I've got everything to gain by going there. But what strikes me right now is that we've got two comments in the chat. 
one about being short and the other about being tall. <laughs> yeah. so it just goes to show that we are all so uniquely different. And it's such a shame we make that a problem. So I wanted to share an exercise, a quick exercise with, with everybody here. And if you're on the replay, and I like to call it the beauty revolution, because I would love for you to imagine if suddenly there'd been a beauty revolution. And instead of finding all the models all the celebrities, like all the trendsetters, film stars, all of that, the most beautiful people, suddenly you were the ideal. Your body was the ideal body type. Your hair was the ideal hair. Your face was the ideal look, right? What if there had just been this revolution and everybody was looking at you as a point of reference, what would that change, right? What would that change to how you carry yourself? What would that change as to how you feel about yourself? And of course, what you wear. What if people were looking to you as a trendsetter? I like to think about that. I think it's so fun to play with. Well, what would I wear, really? How would I feel? What would I do differently? And I think there's so many things that would be different. What do you think, Lucy? Yeah, I, th I think that there'd be a freedom in that, wouldn't there? There'd be this real freedom to just, um, you know, wear what we like and not worry about, any whatever people might think or whether we're in fashion or whether we're modern or whether we are dressing appropriately for our age or all these all these other things that I think we can get stuck in and I think that is um I think that's slowly going over time isn't it when we you know as as in the world that we live in now and as we're getting older but no I, I think it would definitely be there'd be a little liberation there for people that you know you don't have to worry about anything just fully express who you are and I think I think that'd be fantastic. Mm. I'd, I'm really curious to know if anybody has something particular propping up. Uh, if you put it in the chat, I promise not to mention your name. So we won't know on the replay who said what. But um, what would be different and what would you allow yourself to do, really? Anything coming up for anybody that would be so interesting to know. Yeah, fashion goes out of fashion. So true. Yeah, but then style never goes out, does it? <laughs> fashion goes out and style stays. And what, what we're really trying to say with Lucy is that you get to decide. Right? You get to decide you get to what... Define, define your style and, and, and what makes you mm -hmm. feel happy and what makes you feel good. And it's all personal choices. You know, mm. whether you colour your hair or not, or wear makeup or not, or wear colour or not. It's kind of your own personal choice. And that's it. And whatever mm. makes you happy. And it might be different on different days or yeah. different things that you're doing. You know, you don't have to be stuck with one thing all the time. You can you yeah. can change it. And you know, you can change it daily or you can change it over time. You know, mm. you don't it's not something if you define it, it's not something that's rigid that you have to then stick with. It can be something that's um you know, and, and even if you look through your time, don't you, you know, like in the 1950s, Marilyn Monroe and her curves were really in. And then you go to the late 60s and it was Twiggy and her slim, more of a, you know, boyish figure that were in. So it's kind of how do you navigate that if you're not that like that at that time? You know, you might as well just be happy with who you are and dress yourself. Really. Yes, completely. Take, and take inspiration, don't... but don't have to emulate Exactly. And if you go back in history, I think it's so striking when you look at these paintings from hundreds of years ago, like all sorts of body shapes have been in fashion. And that's what inspired me to think about this beauty revolution. What if actually uh, our body shape was exactly what was in fashion, right? 
what if how would we how would we carry ourselves differently how would we behave differently what would we feel confident to do somebody's saying i try to wear heels too but now i'm all about being comfy while still looking sharp oh i like the adjective sharp yeah and i think that's the great point because i think sometimes we think we have to choose between comfort and style rather than being comfortable in our style you know yes and i think when clothes are uncomfortable they're very distracting particularly if it's your feet <laughs> mm. if feet hurt it affects how you you know how you carry your body because pain shows in our face doesn't it pain shows in our face in our body language and 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 if your feet hurt and you're trying to talk to someone all you can think about is that your feet hurt and so this getting this comfort but not compromising on the style i think that is is really important particularly as we're you know getting older and mm we want to be comfortable but also remain stylish and sharp I love that word sharp as well you know like and yeah. what that might mean to you Grace what does looking sharp mean to you you know mm. well, because, because these words mean different things to different people which I think that is what's so fascinating what is sharp to one person is something different to someone else and that's why it's such a hard thing to define you know mm. and we have talked or oh, we have to touched a little bit on on lifestyle Lucy and uh, I think like I can be smart uh, gardening like I won't be wearing a ball gown but it doesn't mean that I have to wear jeans that are worn out that don't fit me and a t-shirt with holes in it right I can be smart yeah. so as you've mentioned a few times it's about dressing for your real lifestyle yeah could you talk a little bit more about that Lucy please yeah, I mean, I think that's really important and something that, is it Menka, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, she just sort of put on the chat that, you know, she likes to wear something daring and, you know, and often gets strange remarks, um, but that is you expressing yourself and that might be, you know, like, what would, you, but you might not want to be wearing something daring all of the time, it might depend on what you're doing in your life and and our lifestyle it is. So really one of the big things about your wardrobe is if it's aligning with your lifestyle, then you start to have more success because that would be what you do, how you get around. I live in Cambridge in the UK. I ride my bike a lot. That means that, you know, the certain of my clothes I, I won't wear on my bike because I just get stuck in the chain. It could be, you know, what sport, do you do sport like Katrina? You like to do gardening. All of the things that you do, how do you like to dress and how do you like to look when you're doing them? And I think a lot of the disconnect that people get frustrated in their wardrobe is because their wardrobe, they, they might love everything in it, but they don't have anywhere to go to wear it. That Because there's a disconnect between what they're doing in their life and what they have. And that could be because they've had a change, like a transition in, in their life, or it could be that, you know, they've just been buying for one part of their life. And then suddenly, well, I've got all of these things for work, for instance, but what do I wear when I'm in the garden? What do I wear when I go out with friends on a Saturday night? That kind of thing. So it's really important that lifestyle, your your life is in your wardrobe, in the way that you want to dress doing those things. And I think that's a really, and as I say, Katrina, you don't have to compromise what you're, you know, your gardening, you still want to look and feel good and, and be yourself. But that doesn't mean you have to be wearing stuff that's got holes in and, and things like that but if that is how you like to dress when you're gardening then that's fine too it's just a very personal thing but I think this connection with your lifestyle is so so vital and I think that's often what people forget when they shop they forget to oh I love the color I love the style it's really me and they buy it and they think oh actually I don't go anywhere in my life to wear this kind of thing and you were talking about a friend of yours weren't you Katrina who bought a dress and she never wore it because she didn't have anywhere in her life to wear it. A yeah, dress that cost, cool. yeah, a, a dress that cost a few thousand euros. Um, so I think it was so sad that she never took the opportunity to wear it. I mean, I would have been the kind of person who have created an occasion to wear it, but um, I think she finally got rid of it because it was just too painful for her to look at it. Um, not to be wearing it. But I also wanted to comment on what, what Menka just said, because I think this idea of wearing something daring and then having all those comments that are disagreeable, 
Well, we really need to educate people into seeing that we've got the right to wear whatever it is we want to wear. And their opinion is just not uh, interesting to us, right? So that means that when we wear something, we really have to feel good in it. And if we feel fabulous in it, if we can really tune into that vibe where we feel so fabulous, where it feels good, then other people's comments can't really be that hurtful. But can I just congratulate Minka on doing it, right? Because this really helps all of us to shift how we think of ourselves and what we wear and what other people wear, right? So we can stop all this judgment going on. What is the point of that? So sometimes just, that I mean, judgment, just... sorry to interrupt you, but sometimes that yeah. judgment is actually an admiration. You know, some, some people admire that you, you've done it, but then they don't have the courage or they don't feel they could do it. And so sometimes that comes out as maybe comments that aren't as supportive as we would like. But but I think as well, like, I think that's exactly right. Um, but when you know it works, those things don't bother you so much, I think. When you when you really feel that what you're doing is, is is feeling good, then you know. But yeah, it's hard, isn't it? When you want to be yourself, but you feel that maybe you do get these strange comments. It's kind of yeah, interesting. But it sounds to me yeah. that Minka doesn't really listen to those because she carries on doing you know doing what makes her happy and you know notices them, but then doesn't doesn't listen. But it can be quite challenging because you know we want to be we don't really want people making comments about us like that, do we? So it can be quite challenging, but um. I think when you know and you're starting to express your style and you know what yeah. works, that doesn't bother you quite so much, maybe. Yeah, so kudos to Menke. So she's saying, I think as well, others have no say in this, yes. The daring thing I wear, which I love, is a dress which is black and colourful flowers, yeah, from Fiji. Okay, it, she gets two types of remarks. It looks fabulous on you. And the remark, uh, do you actually think this suits you? <laughs> and exactly. if you could just turn around, Menka, and say, yes, I do. <laughs> Have you got any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Beth says maybe they're jealous. Yes, because they're not as courageous as you are. I think we can all agree on that. Everybody here would agree that it's fabulous when people wear exactly what they want to wear. So I've just got a very short question for you, Lucy. Do you think that it's possible to be overdressed? Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, well, maybe. I mean, you know, I, th I think it is definitely different people have different styles, don't they? And But sometimes I think we can have a lot going on. And so there's no real, like, focus, no real focal points. And I wonder if... Um, but it's so personal. I mean, to one, what, so that's exactly a point, isn't it? Like one person says you look fabulous. Another person says, do you actually think it suits you? It's kind of like such opposite comments. It, it's all about, you know, what works for you. But sometimes when we don't really know, there could be a tendency to overdo it a little bit. Um, but I think it's, it just goes back to it being so personal, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. what, what is over the top to one person is not over the top to somebody else. So it's kind of if your if your style is quite simple and you know understated, what other people wear might be over the top, and vice versa. Someone else might think you look quite plain. So it's you know how do you how do you navigate all these thoughts and comments other than you know being being comfortable in what you're wearing? So no, I think mm. that's quite a difficult question because it's um you know we we have some people who just naturally like to do that and other people that don't. So I think it's just very much. What do you like? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel good? And then just as Mink says, you know, those complete opposite comments, what are you supposed to do about that other than where what makes you feel good and happy? <laughs> How else can you navigate yeah. that, you know? Yeah. And so I'm going to bring up a point that maybe it was just jealousy. And I think it is. But then I think jealousy is uh, just admiration from a negative perspective. Like we are jealous of the people who we think have got something we can't have. And we call it inspiration when we think they've got something and we can have it too. So I think jealousy is really something we can flip around 180 degrees and look at from the other point, which is 
admiration in this case. But it also could be comparison, uh, going, going back to the comparison point, someone looking at someone who's, you know, doing something they wouldn't normally do and feeling, you know, whatever that might bring up feelings in them. And then that it could be admiration. It could be, you know, oh, I, I, I admire that, but I wouldn't be able to do it. And therefore, instead of admiring it, you can make and I think exactly. sometimes comments come out of our mouth without engaging the brain as well. Sometimes it's <laughs> <laughs> engaged the brain. Right. The time. And Lucy, we had another point we wanted to talk on or mention at least, which is the acceptance, perhaps even appreciation of what it is we've got. Yeah, like definitely. we talked about our bodies. And I like, generally speaking, just to appreciate my body for being here, right? For being alive and to be so relatively well functioning. Yeah. So could you talk to us about, I know that there's a part of you that you might not be crazy about, but that you've come to accept. Yeah, so I think, you know, the acceptance is the bit, you know, that's kind of like where we start from, isn't it? Whether we want to make changes or not is, you know, one thing, but that acceptance. So for me, my hands are not my best feature to look at. I know that they are, you know, I don't have my skin's dry. My fingers are a bit stubby. My nails are so short and weak. They keep breaking. So they're not my best feature to look at, but I can be grateful for them and switch it to gratitude for what they can actually do and enable me to do. And, and just so many different things. So I can, you know, look at them and go, oh, yeah, I could focus on how they look and they're not, not my best feature and then switch that to, okay, you know, imagine if I didn't have them, <laughs> what would my life be like if I didn't have my hands and how, and what they actually do for me and, and switch it to gratitude for, that kind of thing and and do the best I can you know use moisturizer use nail hardeners and things like that but switching the thoughts from completely focusing on the look and switch to the you know gratitude for what they do and I think we we touched on that earlier didn't we as well you know this kind of our look is not just a visual appearance thing it, it's all so many different things and our body is visual but it's also other things that allows us to do as well so I think there's just switching and you talked Katrina when we spoke earlier about you know your nails are short because you otherwise you wouldn't be able to play the harp and that would be a huge part of your life that you wouldn't be able to um you know to do if, if you didn't have those so it's sometimes it's you know really looking at I accept this and and switch it in your mind to being grateful for other other aspects of a of a thing or a part of our body, I think that is is really important and being able to do that. Yes, and that is just so, I mean, so, so true. It's almost a truism. If you can accept something, well, then you can actually change it. But as, as long as you keep wanting to change it because you don't accept it, it doesn't work that way, right? No. And and as you just mentioned, my nails, I was very upset for a number of years. I couldn't have long nails because I used to play the harp professionally. And so I could go on being upset or I could just look at it as, oh, that's just how my hands are. But I did allow myself to get quite upset when a woman told me that, oh, my femininity is in my nails. And I thought, wow. <laughs> What does that make of me? Because, right, I don't feel that my best side is really my nails, so I don't put them forward. But anyway, that was just like a side note. It is so important to accept all of who we are, our body parts, but also perhaps our little quirks, um, what we don't so much admire about ourselves. We can only really be who it is we are if we accept all of it. So that means sometimes perhaps being lazy, sometimes being um, being upset, right? Sometimes being extremely kind, but other times being short with people, right? Accepting it all, how we look, how we feel, what we think is really just part of life, this life from the inside out. Yeah, and just showing ourselves love and kindness, isn't it, for who we are and what we're doing and, and things like that and really being conscious of, I mean, that awareness part of, you know, 
why do I say that to myself or about myself? It might even be if someone pays you a compliment, how do you how do you accept that compliment? Do you say, oh, thank you, like, thank you very much? Or do you say, oh, this old thing, I, I've had it for all these years and I bought it, you know, for five pounds, you know, this. And then we go into this whole story of about the thing that we've been complimented on rather than just saying, oh, thank you. And then walk away, oh, that's really nice to be complimented on. And, you know, I think as women, particularly, we're not very good at accepting compliments Um whether it's about our appearance or our attributes or our abilities, I think we, you know, we kind of deflect them rather than accepting them and taking them in and, you know. Yes, I totally agree with that. And there's so many, many reasons for that, uh, that we perhaps won't go into right now, but it is true that we somehow feel it's safer if, if we deflect the compliments. But um, I'm really glad we touched on this gratitude piece because it is essential um, and being kind and loving towards yourself, like looking at your self-talk and perhaps considering changing it is really also what will bring out that inner radiance. I think it's that acceptance of yourself and that what I like to call self-love when, when you allow that to spill out, not because it's because you think you're better than everybody else, but because you think that you are lovable just as you are, not meaning you're better than other people. You are just as lovable as everybody else. I think that is something we can really cultivate. Um, and I know you had a, an experience, Lucy, with a client who said something about herself that you found a little bit shocking. Would you mind telling us that story? Yeah, so this is like many years ago, but I this lady booked a colour analysis session with me and she arrived and we were having a chat and, and I was explaining what we were going to do. And then I asked her to sit in front of the mirror, which, you know, I have to do when I'm doing well, I'm doing colour analysis in person anyway. And she sat in front of the mirror and she just said, oh, I'm so fat. And that's that's all she said. And I was a bit taken aback that she because, she, you know, I hadn't really thought about her size at all. I was just talking to her about when I'm looking at the colors and everything and then I said to her you know I asked her how she would would feel if I'd have said that if I'd have been said that to her and she said well she well I would have been offended and I would have felt hurt that you'd said that um and and I thought you know when we sometimes start to observe how we speak to and about ourselves we perhaps wouldn't say that to someone else. So why do we think it's okay to say it to ourselves? But really that awareness is the first point, isn't it? Of, oh, did I really just say that to myself about myself, whether it's out loud or in our own head, it's not always helpful to, to do that. And I think realizing that all of this, how we speak to ourselves and about ourselves is a choice. And if we choose to be loving and kind and and have gratitude then that can affect the whole perception of ourselves and that's why this styling is so magic I think because it works on the outside but as it starts to work on the outside it starts to affect the inside oh well, actually you know I, I look good in that color or you know my body is really flattered by these colors and these clothing styles and slowly or quickly the self-perception can start to change through working on the outside and I think that is what the power of it and when you're working on the inside and the outside together like you know you've been talking about Katrina then you're really on you know a road that's going to give you something special I think exactly yeah and I'm so glad you mentioned it because uh, as I just said I used to to be a musician and I used to be on stage and I would wear costumes and I noticed that depending on the costume I was wearing, I felt completely different. And I remember playing Nora in, in Ibsen, uh, which is set in the 19th century, and I was wearing a corset. And that just modified the whole way I moved and so the whole way I felt. And that really just made me realize that what I'm wearing on the outside, yes, it gives off a signal, but it also gives off a signal going inside, right? It gives a signal to how I feel about myself. It gives obviously a signal to other people, but we can't control that. So let's not be too focused on that. It gave me the signal about how I felt and what I was thinking, right? So I know that style, what you wear is so, so important. I also just wanted to comment on Menke. She says, it took me a long time to accept that I have very small breast. 
though beautiful shape. Wanted to have an hourglass figure, yeah, for a long time. Now I finally sort of accept my athletic physics. Yes, I'm also very tall. Long skirts and very short are very nice on me and so different. Most of the time I wear trousers, so funny or very funny. <laughs> and yes, because your body shape might be somebody else's ideal, right? We also, we, I mean, I think we so often fantasize about being the opposite of what we are, both as a personality and in body shapes, right? Um, I think that is just so interesting. And what you just said, Lucy, it's about embracing who we are and finding joy in that. Yeah, and, and really getting to know what works on your body and your colouring so that you can then start to work with that to, and then you don't need to worry about, well, I've got small breasts, but maybe I'd be better if I had big breasts because, you know, it's a bit like your height is your height. You know, there's, there's not much you can do about that other than, you know, you spend your life wishing, but or you just say, well, this is this is me and this is I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got and really embrace myself and, you know, work work with myself in the in the most um, best way that I can. And I think that is the that's where the power comes from rather than, you know, I mean, some things we can change, can't we? And other things we can't change. And even some things we can change, we might decide we don't want to change them. We don't have to change them. We just can just accept them as they are. And sometimes we do change them. It is a very personal thing. Yeah, but I love that. I love that. Complete... Mm, totally. Uh, we've got to end off this uh, workshop, three steps for you that you can take today that will help you be authentic in your style and in your life. And we would like for you, one, to be curious and playful with your style. Explore how you feel in different garments. So that that notion of playfulness is so important, I think, in life and in style. Would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, so just, you know, be curious and, and you can start with your own clothes, you know, like the clothes in your wardrobe, the ones that you really love to wear. Why do you love to wear them? What is going on that has you love them so much? And the things that you don't wear or you rarely wear or you, or you don't enjoy wearing them, what's going on there? Like be curious about um what you like what you don't like what inspires you and, and make it conscious and just start start exploring there's nothing to do other than start exploring and noticing things and I, and it'll be it'll be interesting to see what you discover just purely doing that I think that's um and being playful I think it's really important to be playful because I think we forget to do that as we get a bit older don't we, we can get a little bit serious about things and forget to be playful and have fun exactly so please be playful also I mean, the important question, I think, to ask yourself as you're playing around with your clothes, with your wardrobe, with different styles, perhaps, uh, just ask yourself, well, how do I feel? I don't think we ask ourselves that question often enough. How am I feeling right now? Right, And just check in with it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, being curious is definitely one of the first steps. So be curious and playful. Second step we want you to take right now is use what you've got. So don't go out and fill a ton of shop shopping bags with new stuff. Be playful and, Lucy would say, creative with what you've got. Could you elaborate on that, please, Lucy? Well, I, th I think sometimes we can get stuck, can't we? When I wear that top, I always wear that bottom or that bottom. Or when I wear that dress, I always wear those accessories. And, and it can be, you know, we can get a little bit stuck. And then we think to be creative, we have to have new things. But maybe the thing to do is to start, well, how can you be creative with what you already have? So for instance, you know, like, let's say you had needed to cook dinner and you went to your fridge and you didn't have exactly what you needed for a meal. You start to get creative with the ingredients you've already got in your fridge and create something from there. So think of it in the same way with your clothing. You know, this is what I've got. I've got stuck in wearing things always in the same way. Well, what if I put that color with that color? Or if I wore that skirt with that top, how would that feel? How would that look? And just, you know, some of it you'll like, some of it you don't, but just play with what what's already in there rather than feeling like you have to add and add and add, because I think that doesn't always. And then sometimes we add and we find out we've already got something similar to what we just bought anyway. So, you know, just stop. And it doesn't cost you anything to just play. In your, like Think of it as shopping in your wardrobe. You're shopping in your wardrobe first 
And I think that would bring out your creativity. Like those those necklaces that have been sitting in that drawer for five years, not being worn, bring them out, have a play with them. You know, what's, what's going on there and, and just try, like play with what you already have. Yeah. So what I would like to add that as a notion to that is play also with your best. Bring out your best and wear yeah. that dancing around at home. Why not? What harm can it do? I don't think any. And about your, who I mean, your your personality, really. I find that so many of my clients come to me and they want to change everything. But let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Let's just really be curious and conscious of what it is that's already working, right? What sure. is already working? And then let's build on that. Our third step is that... Um, we want you to treat yourself with love and kindness. And what I have my clients do is first thing in the morning, they look at themselves in the mirror and they say something nice. Like Lucy told us about her clients who said, I'm so fat. Wow. Is that a way to live? No, it isn't. So first thing in the morning, instead of noticing your wrinkles, instead of noticing your, your gray hair or whatever, just say something really kind to yourself, like, Trina, you're such a kind person. Connect with yourself. Say something nice. Have you got anything to add to that, Lucy? Yeah, I think, you know, and just um, what would make you, what would make you give yourself kindness? Pay yourself compliments. You know, why not? And it, it might not even be appearance. It could be something like, you know, I told you my hands are not my best feature, but I do moisturize them a lot and try to take care of them. And, you know, and sometimes small changes, I think sometimes we think, you know, we have to have a big change, we have to have a big makeover to, for it all to be all right. But it's those little changes over time, these little steps that can start to make a big difference and really looking after yourself um, on the outside and the inside. It might be your thoughts, it might be, you know, the physical looking after yourself, but but come from a place of kindness and love and kindness. I think that is really important. So true. So our three steps are one, be curious and playful. Two, use what you've got. Three, treat yourself with love and kindness. And as we're coming up to the top of the hour, Lucy, um, you're being asked, you have consults online and we do. So Lucy, would you mind sharing where people can book an online session with you, please, in the yes. chat? Yes. So Lucy can help you as I'm sure you've got the impression uh, with a lot of things you want to mention any of them Lucy yeah so I, I can do all of my services online and I've just put in the chat is my Calendly link if you'd like to book a chat with me and we can have a chat about what you need and and you know how I, how I can help you or if anyone wants to chat about anything that we've discussed today there's no obligation it's just you know just a conversation to um and I recognize some of the names of the people who are here today so you know if, if you'd like to speak to me again or anyone who's not um, met me before I'd be more than happy to have a chat with you and you can also book a consultation with me and that is if you want to find out who you truly are like not the people pleaser not the perfectionist but the person who's longing to come out more often you can book a session and we'll find out what is holding you back from being all of who you can be most of the time uh, so setting those fears aside and being able to brush away the judgments that you, you fear will come up if you start being more of who that delicious person you are out there in the world. So again, please book a consultation with either Lucy or me, or why not both, if you want to see us both. We're, we're both delighted to be meeting up with you. Uh, and I'm putting my link to a consult in the chat. So I think we can open up now for questions. Would that be OK, Lucy? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So if you're here live, um, if you're watching the replay, can I just say that we are posting the links to our consultations in the description box below? If you're here live, go ahead and ask us any questions. If you're watching the replay, you can use the comments below to ask a question if you've got any. So I'll just stop the recording and we'll be staying on a bit longer for any questions. So thank you for having followed along. Uh, stay in touch, please.